Good evening. For those who don't know me, I'm Katherine Rafelson, President of Sid Washington. I'm so pleased to welcome you tonight to our 2015 annual dinner. Thank you all for taking time out during a very busy time of year to join us. And thank you to all of our sponsors in the room tonight. This evening would not be possible without you. While we are here for the purpose of celebration, I feel as though we should pause to reflect on last week's horrific events in Paris. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said in a speech yesterday, today's violent conflicts and violent extremism are often rooted in a mix of exclusion, inequality, mismanagement of natural resources, corruption, oppression, governance failures, and the frustration and alienation that accompany a lack of, lack of jobs and opportunities. These are the issues that all of us in this room work on every day. Clearly, our work is more important than ever. Let's take a moment in silence for those who were killed or injured in Paris on Friday, and also for those killed or injured in other attacks last week in Beirut, in Baghdad, last month in Sinai, and elsewhere all around the world in acts of terror. Thank you. Our annual dinner is one of our most important events of the year. It gives us a chance to catch up with old friends, make new friends, and take time out from our day-to-day -day jobs to reflect on the priorities we share and the challenges we all must overcome. In response to feedback many of you gave us asking for more opportunities to network, we're trying tonight a different seating arrangement. It was an experiment, and we appreciate your patience and senses of humor as we tried it out. I, I hope it worked for you. I hope that many of you are sitting with people you didn't know before tonight, and that new partnerships and alliances are being formed as I speak, or preferably after I speak. Tonight also gives us the chance to honor major players in our field those who have contributed in an exceptional way to international development. This year, we are honoring two extraordinary individuals, Amina Mohammed from the, the traditional development sector and Rhonda Zagaki from the private sector. With the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals last month, we enter a new phase in our development agendas. It seemed fitting to pay tribute to Ms. Muhammad as one of the chief architects of the SDGs. Ms. Muhammad was recently nominated by President Buhari of Nigeria to the post of Minister of the Environment. While she had planned to join us here tonight, she had to leave for Nigeria to be sworn into her new position just last week. We'll hear from her via recorded video message later this evening and to accept the award on her behalf, we're so pleased to have Joe Colombano from the UN, who worked closely with Ms. Muhammad throughout the SDG planning process. Joe is now officer in charge of the post-2015 unit in the Secretary General's office. And as we move into this new era with the SDGs, the private sector will surely continue to play an increasingly important role. For this reason, we honor Ms. Zagaki, who played a very big role in steering Chevron into the development sphere. We welcome her here tonight, and we look forward to her remarks later this evening. But first, we want you to continue your conversations, enjoy your meals and each other, and we'll interrupt you again in about one hour. Thank you. Good evening. We're going to now
continue with our program for this evening. In September of this year, as all of you know, nearly 200 world leaders committed to 17 sustainable development goals to continue the work which we undertook under the MDGs and to help us fight and end extreme poverty, inequality and justice, mitigate climate change and more. The process the UN undertook to arrive at the post-2015 development goals involved many players, state described the process as three years of complex negotiations and the most inclusive consultation process in the history of the United Nations. A key player in this process was Amina Mohamed, who is now serving as the Minister of Environment in Nigeria. Ms. Mohamed was a special advisor to the UN, General, uh, UN Secretary General for the post-2015 Development Planning Committee from 2012 until just this month when she returned to Nigeria. Perhaps no tribute to her is more telling than that of the Secretary General's statement when he described the SDGs as a people's agenda shaped by some of Africa's finest public servants, starting with my special advisor, Amina Mohamed. It's hard to follow up that type of accolade, but I'd like to just try to add to the list. Amina is a leader, a teacher, an entrepreneur, and an advisor. Before undertaking the challenges of the SDGs, Ms. Mohamed served as the senior special assistant to the president on the MDGs to Nigeria. She served in this capacity during three administrations. She's an entrepreneur, having founded and served as the CEO of the Center for Development Policy and Solutions, as well as the AFRI Projects Consortium. She served as advisor on the board of directors to many organizations, including the Gates Foundation and the Hewlett Foundation on Education. In addition, she's been a teacher. Recently, she served as an adjunct professor at Columbia University. This broad background contributed to Ms. Mohammed's unique ability to bring seemingly divergent groups together to build consensus in her role at the UN. From the beginning of the process, she strove to combine into one comprehensive agenda priorities such as poverty alleviation and environmental sustainability. She recognized that I had mentioned she has now assumed her role in the ministry within Nigeria. Ms. Mohammed has stated that her intention for the next 15 years is to be an integral part of helping her country and the rest of Africa achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in watching this video from Ms. Mohammed. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I'm really honored to have the opportunity to address you here today, if only via video. I'd like to begin by expressing my deepest gratitude to the Society for International Development for having nominated me for this award. I also wish to extend my congratulations to Ms. Saikorki for her leadership within the private sector that is truly in line with the spirit of partnership and the 2030 Agenda. It is a true honor receiving this award, which I want to make extensive to all that have been involved in the biggest mobilization ever to define a shared vision for humanity and for our planet. The 2030 Agenda would never have been possible without the cumulative efforts of the Member States of the United Nations, the United Nations System and its partners. I must credit the tireless efforts of the Secretary General, the UN agencies, civil society organizations, visionary business leaders, negotiators, delegations and of course the important citizens that they re represent, all of whom have played a considerable part in reaching this historic and unprecedented agreement. The 2030 Agenda marks a new era for multilateralism, one which is open, transparent, inclusive and broad-based. It is a plan of action for everyone to collectively address the challenges of ending all forms of poverty, reducing inequalities, while transforming our economies and protecting our planet. The business community alongside civil society and governments will play a key role in implementing the SDGs and building sustainable development. 
The 17 SDGs are a pipeline of opportunities for responsible businesses to drive the creation of sustainable, productive and decent employment, investment in resilient infrastructure that underpins sustainable development and innovations that foster green growth and opportunities for the poor. The SDGs will be the compass for transforming business models for delivering financial, social and environmental value. The new era will be driven by business that is not business as usual. Finally, I wish to commend all of you that are in attendance today for your invaluable contributions to international development. Now is really the time for action, implementation and of course accountability. I'm counting on your continued action to make these goals a reality where no one is left behind. Thank you. I'd like to ask Ms. Mohammed's colleague, Joe Colombano, to now join me on stage to accept this award on her behalf. As Catherine just mentioned earlier, Joe's new role is, ca is officer in charge of the post-2015 unit at the UN, where he will continue to be engaged in helping us carry on and carry out the SDGs. Joe, we appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a um, great pleasure for me to be here. Um, I have had uh, the great honor to serve uh, as Amina's deputy for the very first moment that she came uh, um, into the office. So I'm here to bring again her renewed warm greetings to this beautiful uh, um, audience and set of people. And uh, I am uh, honored to join you here tonight to accept on her behalf this, uh, this award. I wanted to share the good news about her appointment, but somehow uh, you, Catherine, and others are still my thunder. Um, and I wanted to share with you all how excited we are at the UN. Yes, she is leaving us, but she is uh, um, starting this new appointment, which is really is a testament of her dedication to development uh, and her commitment, which is at very much from the first day that she came to bring the new SDGs and the Sustainable Development Agenda to the country level. Um, you've, heard, you've heard her words, I don't want to add too much to it, but allow me uh, to take a moment perhaps for a personal reflection as um, a team member and someone that has been uh, by her side day in day out uh, throughout these, uh, these years. Just recently we've had uh, a far farewell uh, event in our office and in that occasion the Secretary General um, made a playful uh, reference to the 17 SDGs and listed 17 qualities that Amina brought to the office. I will spare you the, the full list. Uh, anything from uh, leadership, drive, passion, and elegance was included. There was one item in that list that really uh, resonated with me. Uh, the Secretary General said that Amina brought to the office uh, her great humanity, a great heart. And I think that those uh, among you that have met her personally will certainly agree with that. That is that one characteristic that sets Amina apart from many other UN leaders and, uh, and also beyond. I'd like to finish uh, to uh, pay tribute to you all, to the Washington chapter of the, International, uh, of the Society for International Development, its president, Catherine, our co-honoree, Rada, and uh, all of you uh, members of the society, affiliates, partners, and friends. As Amina said, it really is thanks to people like you and to a platform like this one that we've been able to put together with all of you this impressive agenda. Um, and uh, I know that you are committed to the agenda, but I'd like to invite you, perhaps to urge you, to continue to engage with the United Nations. Please bear with us. We are at times cumbersome, occasionally old-fashioned and, and uh, outdated, perhaps, in the way we go about our business, in our processes and, and procedures. Because we need you more than uh, ever before. As Amina said, this is the time for action, the time for implementation. And we need all of your expertise and, and commitment and dedication. And perhaps most importantly, we need you to keep a watchful eye and to hold this to account. Thank you very much for this privilege. Uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Vizo, and I work at PACT, but I also have the privilege to serve on the executive committee of SID Washington. It's an absolute delight to be here tonight to honor and celebrate this year's Leadership and Development Awardees. I'm especially honored to introduce a longtime partner, Rhonda Zagaki, who has recently retired as Chevron's Executive Vice President for Policy and Planning as she received Sid Washington's annual award. I promise not to speak for too long, as I imagine you are, like I am, much more interested in hearing from Rhonda. But if you'll allow me, I'd like to share a few words about Rhonda and why I'm so thrilled that she is one of our very accomplished and deserving awardees this evening. As Catherine said earlier, we're entering a new phase in international development. From the rollout of the sustainable development goals we've just heard about to the emergence of the fourth sector, we're experiencing a dynamic evolution in the development space. And the private sector is increasingly playing an active, transformative role in this evolution. Chevron is a leading example of the transformation that can result when the power of the private sector is deployed to tackle some of the world's most intractable problems and to make people's lives measurably better. Working in the energy business can be, well, messy. It isn't easy, and lots of people have lots of opinions on how energy companies should or should not go about their work. But one thing that I've come to deeply admire and trust is that Chevron is sincere in their commitment to doing things right and doing the right things. This is evident to me when I was privileged to be on a panel that Rhonda chaired at the GBC Health Conference a few years ago. The panel was talking about the work that Chevron was doing in partnership across Nigeria on the prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV. Rhonda began by discussing Chevron's investments around the world and why they believe it is important to support the communities where they operate. And then she paused and said something that has stuck with me ever since. Chevron had been working in Nigeria for 100 years. That one fact was an epiphany for me. When you operate in one place for that long, your commitment to lasting, sustainable change grows deep and genuine. It isn't someone else's community anymore. It becomes a shared community. And Chevron doesn't use words like lasting partnerships and investments lightly. They truly are investing for now and generations to come. As a leader of Chevron's global social investment strategies, Rhonda solidified the company's global corporate reputation as a driving force for development. But she also led the charge for the power of partnerships and a shared journey. At a CSIS panel in 2013, Rhonda emphasized that one of the strongest lessons Chevron had learned was that when we work in a shared way, in true partnership, we create leverage and scale that eludes us on our own and can lead to transformative change. Soon after I joined PAC, I quickly saw Rhonda's words in action. She was dedicated to ensuring that communities prospered, that people could care for their families with dignity, and for working hand in hand with partners, no matter their type, public, private, international, and local. During her over 10 years as a vice president and corporate officer at Chevron, and as a member of Chevron's executive committee, she put these principles into practice. What began as a singular focus project to improve access to health services for communities in Myanmar's dry zone years ago, when investing and working in Myanmar was still a risky proposition, we've grown into a partnership with Chevron that is tackling some of the most challenging issues confronting people in their everyday lives. With PACT from access to health services in Myanmar, to preventing mother-to-child transmission of HIV, in Nigeria, to economic empowerment for women in Cambodia, and supporting socially and environmentally responsible development in Thailand and across the Mekong Delta. Our work together and the strength of our partnership is a testament to the dedication of many people across the world, but none more so than Rhonda's. The hundreds of thousands of people who have benefited from those efforts would not have been possible without her leadership, her commitment, and most of all, her personal passion and drive. From overseeing the company's global social investments to her active role as Chevron's ambassador in the fight against HIV and AIDS, Rhonda's dedication and action has made people's lives demonstrably better. In Bayelsa State, Nigeria alone, more than 50,000 pregnant women have been tested for HIV and now know their status because of Rhonda. Women like Mrs. Godspower, who was encouraged to get tested for HIV, 
learned she was HIV positive, and received the necessary treatment and knowledge to ensure she didn't pass the disease on to her baby. Today, she has a beautiful, healthy, HIV-free baby girl. This is just one singular example of the many lives that Rhonda's work has touched. Your drive in making Chevron a major force for creating a better world for those less fortunate, Rhonda, has been an inspiration to me personally and to many others in this room and throughout the development sector. Your career at Chevron has demonstrated how personal passion, purpose, and practicality can conspire together to make a difference. As we all continue to work for a better tomorrow for the millions who find themselves poor and marginalized around the world, we look to you and your example on leadership and guidance and inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Rhonda Zagaki to the stage. Good evening, and thank you, Mark, for that very kind introduction. It is a privilege to be here tonight and to receive this award in the presence of so many valued partners and those so deeply committed to development. People like Mark, whose passion and perseverance continue to shape our world and transform the lives of those in need. Organizations like SID, a critical touchstone for practitioners in the field enabling collaboration and dialogue that spurs positive change worldwide. And of course, my fellow honoree, Amina Muhammad. Even though she cannot be here tonight, we recognize her lasting efforts have set a framework for a path forward for greater prosperity for all. And while this award is truly a, a personal honor, it is more a reflection of the values of a company the power of partnerships, and the inspiration born of hope and human spirit. As many of you know, and it's been mentioned, this past February I retired from Chevron after a career that spanned more than 30 years. I joined the company as an engineer, aspiring to build things, to bring energy to the world. That, I thought, would be my role in society's development. And for much of my career, it was. Little did I know that bringing energy to the world, we would join the fight against HIV AIDS, address human rights, poverty, and conflict, rebuild communities from post-war and post-humanitarian crisis, and support livelihoods that grew village enterprises and national industries alike. It says a lot about the role of business in society today, but even more so, about how a company like Chevron conducts itself around the world. Our development journey with the company was built upon the company's values, as Mark mentioned, in this case, partnerships. We learned that community trust, enduring progress, and sustainable development will never be achieved by acting alone. Governments, companies, and civil society must work together to build the institutions and social services needed to strengthen communities and build better livelihoods for those in need. One of our first evolutions in our private sector development journey was rethinking the role we would play in fighting a devastating disease. You see, some of Chevron's largest operations are located in sub-Saharan Africa, where the grip of HIV AIDS is the strongest. And when disease, poverty, and conflict threaten employees, your day-to-day -day operations, and long-term business interests, you don't turn a blind eye, you act. We were among the first companies to recognize the importance of the fight of HIV AIDS and responded with a global HIV AIDS policy for employees, providing them with access to education, treatment, and care. And when we watch this disease impede the prosperity of the communities and nations our employees call home, we reached out to you governments, donors, communities, health institutions, experts, and NGOs to expand our contribution in this fight 
by leveraging our collective strengths and working together to achieve the necessary scale, reach, expertise, and dedicated commitment to make headway against this disease at an individual, a community, and a national level. That outreach resulted in partnerships with groups like PACT, Born Free Africa, the Global Fund, and others. Today, we are working together to eliminate mother-to-child transmission of HIV in Nigeria, improve primary health services, and combat other deadly diseases around the globe. Millions have been touched by this collective work. We also learned that forming partnerships that necessarily involve governments is a key stepping stone towards building a nation and the institutions vital for sustained economic and social development. We applied those learnings when invited to help rebuild Angola after 30 years of civil war. Chevron, along with USAID and others, launched a groundbreaking partnership to rebuild agriculture and establish microcredit. It's been over 10 years, and success continues today from that work. And success, well, it breeds confidence and replication. On the tales of our Angola experience came one of Chevron's biggest partnerships to date, the Niger Delta Partnership Initiative, a $90 million multi-year endeavor. The company is partnering with the US government, the UK government, and local governments alike to bring greater stability to the Niger Delta region, working with communities to identify new economic opportunity while at the same time improving the operating environment for Chevron and local businesses. Through NDPI, as we call it, we have helped to generate economic development, improve the capacity of civil society institutions, and reduce conflict in the Niger Delta region. Nearly 290,000 people in the Delta have indirectly benefited from NDPI's workforce training. Learnings from this experience have been applied to other partnerships focused on education, job training, and microloans in nations where Chevron works around the globe. And here in DC, we've moved beyond the field and formed a multi-year partnership with CSIS to convene, to convene, debate, and influence US government policy concerning development. So we've done a lot, and I thank you for that recognition. So it's, it shouldn't surprise you that as I, as I reflect on Chevron's development journey, I do so with great pride. This was not only a company that recognized the deep connection between society's well-being and business success, but dared to redefine the role of business in order to strengthen that interdependency. We challenged conventional wisdom and moved the conversation, as well as our action, from donors to partners, from building bricks to building capacity, from short-term projects to multi-year endeavors, and from shared ceremonies that celebrate a launch to shared progress that celebrates results. Thank you. And we focused on health, education, and livelihoods because these are the very foundation and building blocks of stable economies. And in doing so, we've saved and changed the lives of many. And we did this inside one of the world's largest oil companies. <laughs> And I want to thank you, this community, the choices we've made, but most importantly, the partners we choose have helped create a stronger, healthier, and even more prosperous existence for communities worldwide. In the next 15 years of the New End Development Agenda, as we've, as we've talked about already, the issues will be no less pressing or urgent as the sustainable goals indicate. The need for partnerships and for the private sector to be at the table in helping to solve those problems will remain. And I'm so pleased to see that the new UN, UN goals recognize this fact. The role that business can play in shaping a stronger tomorrow is indeed powerful. So as you continue this journey as partners committed to the global development, I encourage you to draw inspiration from hope, draw your perseverance from progress, and wisdom from each other. 
If my long career has taught me anything, it is that we possess much more capability than we can imagine, that the human spirit is much more resilient than we can imagine, and that you can be a force for human progress from wherever you are. The ability to improve society through steel and stamina is actually what Herbert Hoover once called an engineer's high privilege, to have the opportunity to build not only steel, but the human spirit. I feel I have surpassed President Hoover's ideals. Thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you for your kind attention this evening. And on behalf of Chevron, thank you for giving Chevron and this engineer the highest honor and privilege. Thank you, Rhonda, for all you've done to help bring such a major player to the table and to set the bar higher for other firms to follow in your wake. Thank you also, Amina, for your hard work in establishing such important milestones for all of us to strive for. And thank you, everyone who's hidden here tonight, and to all of our SID members, for all you do for the people of the world, for our planet, and for sustainable development. Have a very happy holiday season and go home safely. Good night. <laughs>